Hello from Tutorials PDR YouTube channel. In a couple of months ago, I created uh, some videos about Apache Kafka and RabbitMQ, and uh, those videos got a lot of popularity. And many people asked me about uh, having another video to compare the two. Uh, frankly speaking, RabbitMQ and Kafka has their own use cases and their own fundamentals. And uh, some people argue that uh, having a comparison between the two doesn't make much sense. But in general, most of the people, when they are choosing some of the products for uh, messaging or even streaming, they are confused uh, which one to choose because there are plenty of options available out of those two of the most popular one are Kafka and RabbitMQ. So I thought of creating a video to clarify some of the points and having uh, analysis of uh, the use cases where these two work uh, better. And of course, uh, you have a right to disagree and a right to agree as well as uh, some of the points that I mentioned are limited. And of course, I cannot create a video with very huge uh, set of comparative uh, options because uh, the two applications are quite handy at their own and they fulfill some of the criteria, some of the requirements uh, for different use cases. And depending on your specific use case, depending on your specific requirements, uh, you might always uh, choose either of the two. But there are some cases where, of course, you will have to choose only one because uh, uh, there are some cases where uh, uh, one particular product out of these fits well. Before I proceed, if you haven't gone through and if you have not much idea about the fundamentals, the basic concepts associated with Apache Kafka or RabbitMQ, I'll strongly recommend you to go through uh, the other videos that I created about uh, introduction and the basics uh, and the components of these two and uh, I'll put the link to both videos in the description. So I'll suggest you to go through those videos before you go for a comparative analysis or a comparison uh, uh, in this video. All right, so now uh, let's proceed with this video. And what we are going to see is that uh, what are the major points based on which we can have a comparative analysis and we can have a comparison between RabbitMQ and Kafka. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, uh, RabbitMQ is basically exchange-based messaging and some message broker, while Kafka uh, works with pub sub mechanism only, and it's uh, essentially a commit log. It's not, uh, it cannot be uh, categorized as a broker. So when we say message broker, uh, uh, RabbitMQ as exchange-based uh, message broker, so what happens in case of message uh, MQs uh, in RabbitMQ is that, uh, Whenever you are going to send messages, whenever a producer is going to produce some messages uh, to be consumed by the consumers, the messages are going not going to be sent directly to the queues or topics. Rather, it's going to be sent to an exchange. And there is a, um, there is a correlation or there is a binding between the exchange and uh, the queues. So the messages uh, will be routed to the queues uh, from the exchange. So uh, there are different type of uh, exchanges uh, available in RabbitMQ like Fanout, Topic Exchange, Header Exchange, and you can uh, read through uh, about these exchanges or you can go through about these exchanges in, in the video where I explained about the basics of RabbitMQ. So depending on the type of exchange, uh, messages are routed based on the regular uh, expression-based pattern or based on uh, the direct one-to-one uh, -one, uh, correlation between uh, between your uh, exchange and the queue, or it can be uh, even a pub sub essentially. And when we talk about Kafka, in case of Kafka, the messages are uh, being written to the commit log, and uh, then from there, uh, based on the pub sub mechanism, consumers any number of consumers can read from that commit log based on the provided offsets. So uh, underlying concepts uh, for RabbitMQ and Kafka for uh, relaying or for delivery of messages or for uh, uh, passing the messages from the producer to the consumer is essentially different. The second point based on which we are going to compare RabbitMQ and Kafka is that uh, the, the use cases uh, for which uh, the two fits vary. Typically, when you need a uh, conventional or a traditional message broker to uh, uh, to act as a middleware between your producers and consumers for different use cases, you will go for RabbitMQ. So it will just act as a typical uh, message broker 
to 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 just uh, loosely couple or uncouple uh, decouple your producers and uh, your subscribers and in that way uh, you will have a message broker in between so producers are producing the messages sending it to the exchange and then the bounded ex bounded queues which are bound to the exchange gets the message and from there uh, the messages are being pushed towards the consumer and in case of kafka uh, the use case for which it fits is uh, for the high high throughput streaming requirements or uh, uh, take an example of let's suppose that you have an iot uh, in uh, type of uh, project where uh, you want uh, real time uh, you have some sensors uh, which are uh, producing a very uh, huge number of messages uh, continuously and you want to stream those type of messages and you want to um, make it available for the consumers so for this type of scenarios uh, kafka is uh, considered to be a right choice and generally speaking uh, although this is again a debatable concept because uh, both rabbitmq and kafka can be tuned for better performance but in general uh, talk of the town is that kafka performs way better when we have to go through a scenario where we have to do such type of high throughput like streaming iot or other type of uh, uh, scenarios where we have we need high throughput and where we have uh, a huge maybe millions of uh, messages uh, millions of uh, uh, events getting produced and we want to stream them from the producer to the consumer so the underlying uh, technology or underlying concepts of kafka with partitioning with clustering uh, and with uh, uh, different type of other options which are available in kafka those make it a better choice in this type of scenario but in case uh, of a conventional uh, messaging option where you just want uh, some uh, middleware which acts as a smart middleware or a smart broker uh, you will go for rabbit mq because it does fulfill all the uh, all the requirements of uh, just relaying or just passing the messages as a middleware uh, very conveniently and very efficiently the third thing uh, which uh, uh, we are going to consider here as a comparison between RabbitMQ and Kafka is the way the two uh, applications or the two products work. If you talk about RabbitMQ, in this case, we have smart broker dumb consumer uh, messaging model where we are having a push model. So what happens is that in this case, the middleware itself acts smart and consumers are dumb. So consumers don't uh, pull uh, the messages itself Rather, uh, it's the responsibility of RabbitMQ as a message broker itself to push the messages to the consumers based on their interest or based on their subscription model. And con uh, contrary to this, if we talk about Kafka, in case of Kafka, we have a dumb broker. And in this case, Kafka uh, itself is going to act dumb. And we have consumer or consumer groups which are smart. So they are working on the pull mechanism and what they do is that they read based on the offset from the partitions available in Kafka. So they are reading all the messages uh, as and when needed and that way uh, it's acting uh, with the pull mechanism. Another thing which is important to discuss here is that uh, in case of RabbitMQ, uh, your messages uh, once consumed uh, uh, from the uh, queues get lost or get uh, removed and also you can uh, although you can make some other mechanism uh, in, in general also before the consumption of the messages that how much time to leave you want to set and when what what the expiry but in case in case of kafka what happens is that the messages uh, based on the retention policy stay there so uh, the consumers can read them multiple times Oh, sorry, this point is, uh, I explained already, but uh, it was written later. So in case of RabbitMQ, let me rephrase or let me explain it further that we have act-based retention. So once we receive the acknowledgement, we normally just uh, purge or remove the message from the queue as it's no more needed. And it has been acknowledged by the consumer that it has been used. But in, case of, in case of Kafka, we have policy-based retention. So we can have, we can have uh, our organization-level policy are based on whatever model we are using that maybe we want to uh, retain all the messages in our commit logs 
for month, for a month, for a week, for a year, or whatever policy you agree on. So in this way, in case of Kafka, uh, you get uh, better persistence in a way that you can re-access uh, the messages based on their available offsets or whatever, whatever, whatever partition in which they reside in. So the consumers or consumer groups have a better leverage over here. Another point uh, which uh, comes into uh, the, the picture and it's quite handy is uh, how, uh, from the usability perspective, how good they are. So in, if we talk about RabbitMQ, it provides a built-in browser-based UI for administration or operations and monitoring, which I have covered in another video as well. So it's very uh, easy and convenient uh, um, browser-based uh, tooling where you can create exchanges, you can do the binding of the exchange to the queues, you can just uh, do some uh, publishing of the messages and subscription of the messages and you can uh, do other administrative tasks and monitoring as well over there quite uh, uh, conveniently but if we talk about kafka uh, in the, in the case of a general open source uh, version of kafka you will have to rely on additional ui toolings for operations and monitoring but of course if you go for a or a vendor specific version of Kafka, like you go for Confluent or something else, uh, you will uh, not have this problem. So it's actually not a problem, just just a uh, difference that in case of RabbitMQ, things are built in for you uh, to just directly jump into the uh, UI based uh, administration. But in case of Kafka, you will have to rely on some additional tooling. So these are few points. Of course, uh, the world of RabbitMQ and the world of Kafka is quite huge. And uh, just uh, based on a few points, you cannot uh, just make a comparison and can make a conclusion which one is better. And this video is not about uh, proving Kafka is better or RabbitMQ is better or who, which one is bad. Both of them are good. That's why both of them are in the market for so long and they're quite popular. And uh, for different type of um, uh, projects from the medium scale to the large scale at the enterprise level as well as at the smaller granular level, these two are being used uh, in different uh, industries and quite popular. And they are serving their customers pro properly. But uh, depending on your use case, uh, I will suggest that whenever you have to make a decision between RabbitMQ and Kafka or between any other uh, message broker or messaging platform, the best uh, approach is to do some proof of concept of POC for your use case and analyze based on your requirements, based on your uh, team's technical abilities, based on your future goals, uh, and all those things that which one serves you better. Both of them will not disappoint you. But of course, uh, if uh, your use case uh, doesn't fit uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the required uh, functionality, in the available functionality of, uh, of either of those, then you might face a problem. So uh, the two uh, technologies, Kafka and RabbitMQ, have different underlying concepts and uh, the way they work are a little different. So don't think that uh, once you agree or once you decide to use one, it will be very seamless uh, transition to the other, other one. So it's very important that whenever you are going to choose a technology, choose it wisely and choose it properly so that you don't have to move the, and do the migrations quite often. Of course, uh, in this uh, small video, I cannot cover all of the uh, underlying things uh, which can make a comparative analysis between the two. But I am sure that uh, this video will give you a, a, a jump start or uh, heads up to uh, dig further into this and understand how the two technologies work and uh, what are the fundamentals associated with the two and how you can uh, decide better to choose one. All right, so that's it from this video and I hope that uh, whatever is discussed in this video is uh, useful for you and uh, you've got some uh, better understanding of the two technologies. And with the other two videos which I for, for which I'm putting the link in the description, uh, you should be in a better position to understand the concepts uh, associated with Kafka and RabbitMQ. And if you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as uh, more is yet to come this channel. Thank you.